Imagine a future where HIV, one of the most challenging viruses humanity has ever faced, could be prevented with just a vaccine shot, much like measles or polio. For decades, this idea felt more like a dream than reality. But today, we might be closer than ever before. Two groundbreaking trials, IAVIG2 and IAVIG3, are showing us that the dream of an HIV vaccine might finally be within reach. These early studies are small, yes, but they represent a huge leap forward in global health. So in today's video, we're going to explore why HIV has been so difficult to defeat, what makes these trials different, how the germline targeting strategy works, and most importantly, what this breakthrough means for the future. Stick with me till the end, because the story is both inspiring and game-changing. Let's start with the big picture. Why has HIV been such a nightmare for vaccine development? Well, think of HIV as a master of disguise. Unlike many viruses, HIV mutates constantly. It changes its outer coat, so antibodies that might work against one version are useless against another. It's like trying to hit a target that not only moves but also changes shape every time you aim. For decades, researchers have been chasing this moving target with frustration after frustration. But then came a new strategy, germline targeting. So what is germline targeting and why is it so revolutionary? Think of your immune system as an army. The soldiers in this army are B cells, which produce antibodies. Most of the time, they're like raw recruits they have potential, but they need training. Germline targeting acts like a boot camp. Scientists design special vaccine components called immunogens that specifically train the rare B cells with the potential to develop into elite soldiers, the ones capable of producing what researchers call broadly neutralizing antibodies or BNDOPs. Why are BNABS so important? Because unlike regular antibodies, BNABS are like a master key. They can unlock and neutralize many different strains of HIV even as the virus mutates. This has been the holy grail of HIV research for decades. And for the first time, germline targeting shows that we can deliberately guide the immune system to make them. Let's look at the first of the two trials, IAVIG2. This study was conducted in North America it used a sequential immunization strategy, basically a step-by-step -step training program for the immune system. One, step one, the priming shot. This used an immunogen called EODGT860MER. Think of it as the first lesson, waking up those rare naive B cells and getting them into action. Two, step two, the booster shot called CORGI28V260MER. This was the advanced training session, helping those B cells mature into stronger defenders. And here's the interesting part. Both were delivered using Moderna's mRNA platform, the same technology used in COVID-19 vaccines. Why mRNA? Because it allows scientists to deliver genetic instructions with precision, telling your body exactly what to build to train the immune system. And the results? The trial showed that this approach worked the target B cells were successfully engaged, proving the concept that germline targeting could indeed guide the immune system in humans. Now, let's talk about IAVIG3. This one took things global. It was conducted in South Africa and Rwanda, two countries where HIV has had a massive impact. And importantly, it was led by African scientists. This wasn't just symbolic, it was vital to ensure the research was relevant for diverse populations worldwide. The trial focused mainly on the priming step using the same EODGT860 MER immunogen delivered via mRNA. And here's the jaw-dropping result. 94% of participants developed what are called VRC1 class antibodies. Now, what does that mean? VRC1 class antibodies are a type of BNAB, known for being extremely powerful against many HIV strains. Hitting that 94% success rate across a diverse group of people is extraordinary. 
It tells us that this strategy isn't just working in the lab or in small groups, it has the potential to be effective globally. One thing that stands out in both trials is the use of mRNA technology. Most of us now associate mRNA with COVID vaccines, but these trials highlight its true potential. It's not just about speed, it's about precision. Scientists can deliver exact instructions to the immune system, like coding a program, and get very specific immune responses. This suggests a future where vaccines for complex diseases like HIV, malaria, or even cancer might be designed more quickly, more flexibly, and with incredible accuracy. So what are the big takeaways from these trials? One, proof of concept. Germline targeting isn't theory anymore. It works in humans. Two, VRC1 class responses. Achieving BNAB responses in 94% of participants is a huge milestone. Three, diversity matters. Running G3 in Africa shows the approach works across different populations, essential for a global vaccine. But let's also be realistic. These were phase one trials, small early stage studies. The next steps are much bigger. Phase two and three trials to test safety, dosing, and real-world effectiveness. Refining immunogens to make responses even stronger and broader. And of course, answering the big question, can this approach actually prevent HIV infection on a large scale? So what does all this mean for you right now? Well, these vaccines aren't available yet, but knowing about this research matters. It shows that progress is happening real, measurable progress. It also reminds us that current prevention tools like regular testing, prep, and safe practices remain crucial until vaccines become a reality. But more than anything, this research gives us hope. Hope that within our lifetimes, HIV prevention might look radically different. Hope that the decades-long fight against HIV is finally turning a corner. So to wrap it up, the IAVI G2 and G3 trials have proven that germline targeting works in humans, and they've shown that mRNA technology is a powerful ally in this fight. It's not the end of the road, but it's a massive step forward. The dream of an HIV vaccine is no longer just a dream, it's starting to take shape. What do you think? Do you believe we'll see an HIV vaccine in the next 10 years? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear your perspective. And if you found this deep dive helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with someone who should know about these groundbreaking developments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.